Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Alex Avila, author, speaker, psychologist with Love University, where we learn how to love ourselves, others, and a higher power. This week, I have a very interesting uh, reversal where I am going to be interviewed by a relationship experts, Sarah and Chase Kosterlitz, who are actually a married couple and also are marriage and relationship counselors. And they have a, an interesting website and, and products and, co and coaching they do. And today, they're going to interview me on the power of compatibility in love. So stay tuned now and let's take a listen. Let's jump in and, and maybe you can tell us about this classification and we'll go into each one. Yeah, basically, uh, Guy Types is, is a new book that came out last year. And it's a, an update of Love Types, which was a bestseller, came out about 10 years ago. And uh, utilizing the, the Jungian personality types um, used for the Myers-Briggs uh, personality types, which you, you may have heard about. And the idea is that you know we have unique uh, styles. For example, we have what are called the meaning seekers. These are people that love psychology, philosophy, spirituality, and the arts, and they like to find meaning in life. And then other uh, people are what we call the excitement seekers. They like to have adventures, and they're outgoing, and you know maybe bungee jumping and things like that. Uh, we have the knowledge seekers, which are the kind of scientific brainy types that value competence, intelligence, and uh, you know innovation. And then we have what we call the, the security seekers, people that love family, tradition, and responsibility, that are kind of looking for security. So the idea is that you want to find someone usually that resonates within your, your main group or personality style. And uh, so love types and guy types teaches people how to do that, whether they're single or couples. So I'm hearing these descriptions and I feel like I could maybe be all four. <laughs> but, oh, really? <laughs> uh, so how is the classification? I'm sure there's some, some questions that get answered in each one. Can someone be in multiple uh, type uh, personality? Well, usually yeah, you can have elements of, of another group or type, but usually you have a one primary preference, just like you know, you're left-handed or right-handed, and that's your primary hand. And the key is, well, what is your overall style? For example, let me say, I'll ask you, Chase, what would you do if you won $10 million? I would go traveling. Okay, yes. traveling. <laughs> what else? <laughs> and so, would you take Sarah with you? Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is, that, is that okay, Sarah? You wanted to go with them too? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else, Chase? I mean, you know, $10 million is a lot of money, so you can do whatever you want in life and, and do anything you want. Man. I would, I would surf, but I'm kind of doing that already. Uh, pay off our debt, and uh, maybe wouldn't worry about eating out as much. Okay. <laughs> I we keep a that. pretty simple life. Oh, really? Hey, Sarah, you don't make him any, any home cooked uh, meals out there, or is it a little I hard? I do, but I wouldn't mind eating out every night. Okay, that makes sense. That's a little fun. Okay, and then anything else with the money? I mean, the rest of your life, what would you do with the money? Man, uh, save it, put it in a, a fund for our daughter. Um, okay. But I, I couldn't imagine buying too many things. It's pretty okay. simple. Okay, uh, makes, makes yeah. sense. All right, so you sound like you're a fairly realistic kind of guy, uh, practical and concrete. You like to use the money for you know practical things, perhaps. And um, so that's one of the questions. So some people would say, you know, I would go to the Himalayas and meditate. I would start a great business to change the world. They're what we call the imaginative or intuitive types. So that's a, that's a little different style. Now, Chase, uh, another question is, let's say uh, we got two tickets to, I don't know, a place you want to go, Hawaii tomorrow, but you got to go the next day, a work day, would you go? And we invite you to go. Absolutely. Okay. Are you that kind of person? Are you a little spontaneous and free-flowing kind of guy, or do you like to plan things out? A little bit of both. I, I am spontaneous. <laughs> You're not making it sure. easy here, Chase. I know. I'm <laughs> well, sorry, what do you think? I mean, uh, he, get, he gets two tickets to go. Are, is he gone or is he going to plan it out and say, well, I'm gonna, let me check my schedule? Um, I think he would check his schedule more. I would definitely go right away. I'm a lot more uh, spontaneous. Okay. So do you feel that he's, is he pretty organized on time and structured, do you think? No, not at all. <laughs> oh, not at all. Okay. So on top. A little bit messy, a little bit messy, disorganized and late, would you say? Yes. Okay. <laughs> not right. late, just disorganized. Oh, okay. So, uh, well, I mean, so he could be what's called the excitement seeker. Is he a person that likes outdoor adventures and um, spontaneity and adventure? Or is he more of a, uh, like a structured, organized person? No, so. I think he would be the excitement. He seeks okay, uh, but, he doing exciting outdoor things. Okay. And, yeah. Bungee jumping, uh, you know, canoeing, stuff like that. Yep. Okay, perfect. Yep. So there you go, Chase. So you are the excitement seeker. We just figured you out. It took us about five minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, well, and then Sarah, we'd have to determine your type. How would you answer the first question, the $10 million question? Um, I would probably 
by a couple houses. Okay. In different locations that we like to travel to. Right. And probably do the same thing, put some money away for Stella, pay off our debt, and just enjoy life and not really think about, you know, a budget. <laughs> okay. And then to take us to Hawaii tomorrow, but you already have something planned, what would you do? I would go as long as it didn't interfere, like it didn't, you know, hurt oh. plans with somebody else. Okay. So you're pretty spontaneous, would you say, Saba? Yeah. Okay. So both of you guys are uh, excitement seekers. You're compatible. Congratulations. Perfect. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, believe it or not, there are people that are not compatible. I mean, you could be what's called a meaning seeker or, a, or you know, a dollar seeker. Uh, and you may be with another person that, you know, is not really your type. And then you might have a lot of problems in, in a marriage because you don't respect and appreciate each other's style. So that's what I teach people in love types and guy types is to first find someone who resonates with you. But even if they're a little bit different, once you're married, you want to learn how to respect and appreciate that difference when there is a difference. What kind of questions would you ask your partner to kind of initiate these, uh, like what we did, to find out about your partner and find out what a type of personality they do have? Well, again, like I said, the, the $10 million question is one. Uh, that determines if they're imaginative or practical. What would they do with the money? Uh, the you know Going to Vegas or Hawaii or something the, the next day, uh, you know, to see if they are spontaneous. Another question is, what do you do for fun in your spare time? For example, uh, if you like to stay home a lot and you know, uh, listen to music, relax, meditate, read a book, you might be more what we call the introvert energy person that likes to spend time with your own thoughts. And then if you're more a sociable person, like to go out and socialize a lot, you're more extrovert. And that can be a big pro uh, issue in relationships uh, and marriages when you have an extrovert with an introvert personality and they don't respect each other's style. Now, let's say, Sarah, I would ask you the question, what do you like to do for fun in your spare time? Well, now that we have a two and a half year old, I would say some peace and quiet, like get a massage. <laughs> okay, okay. Before that, probably go out with friends and have a good time and socialize. So I, I bet, you know, that's kind of changed a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, do, you, do you get more energy from other people or from your own thoughts generally? Other people. Okay. How about you, Chase? Uh, what is your uh, preference um, for fun? I, I mean, I, I love being outside, outdoors, surfing, primary activity. Pretty much every day. Okay, and more on your own, like you, like your own, your own thoughts and energy, or other people. Yeah, if I had to pick, I'd definitely more introverted. My okay, own perfect. Uh, okay, Sarah. So um, I'm writing this down here. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm determining your type. So you're extroverted, and uh, I think you said you're practical and spontaneous. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and I also sense that you're a feeling personality. Are you a pretty sensitive kind of person, emotional? No. Okay, you're more logical. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. So, uh, for example, what's your favorite movie? <laughs> um, oh, no. I don't even know. Or one that you liked a lot, for example. Um, let's see. Um, can, you name, can you name one for me? I don't even know. I, I don't remember the last <laughs> time I watched a movie. We watch a lot of series. We watch a lot of, yeah, like House of Cards, so like dramas. Okay, well, why do you like the House of Cards? Uh, I like the, the drama, real life, excitement kind of don't know what's going to happen in the next scene. Okay. So you uh, are a person that likes the, the uh, you know, the uh, action of the movie or the plot and, uh, you know, something that makes you think. Yeah. So we call that the thinking personality. Now, if you said, well, I love the love story and it made me cry, that's more the so-called feeling personality and uh, more of the emotional style. How about you, uh, Chase? How would you answer that movie question? I would have to agree. Maybe not a particular movie, but, but like a drama series or uh, a thriller. Okay. And why yeah. do you like it? Why do you like it? The, say, for example, the drama series. Uh, just that it, it it keeps you on your toes, makes makes you think, um, and uh, yeah, I find that entertaining. Okay. So basically, uh, Sarah, based on that question, that's called the movie question, by the way. So that's one of the, uh, what I call the four magic questions. So you can meet people and and you know, ask them those four questions and get to know their love type or their personality, romantic style. And uh, based on the question, you sound like you might be what's called the wheeler dealer personality, Sarah. Like someone who's good at promotion, marketing, maybe business and things like that. Kind of like an exciting kind of person. Does it sound anything like you? Uh, it does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Chase, you sound like a craftsperson. Uh, uh, someone like an outdoors kind of guy, quiet, hands-on kind of person that, that likes your independence and freedom and likes to explore nature and, and different things. Does that sound anything like you? Independence and freedom, that is all me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so you're a hands-on kind of guy. You're like the Clint Eastwood, you know, the you know strong, silent guy that gets things done. 
you know, uh, probably go with your hands. I don't know if you like to work with tools or, or machinery or things like that. Sometimes strong, silent, maybe definitely not. me. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so you guys are both pretty compatible, actually. Uh, you're almost the same. You know, you're both practical, you're both logical, you're both a little bit spontaneous. The only difference, Sarah, is that I think you have a little more extroversion from what you're telling me uh, in the past. You were a lot more socialized in the, before, before you got married? Yeah. Okay, and then uh, Chase, you're more introvert. So that's, that could be one area in married couples, uh, especially when we have a, f a female extrovert with a male introvert. They have the most problems in chores, finances, communication, and sex if they don't respect each other's style. Because the introvert male is quieter, and then she might take the lead in things, and if she doesn't respect him, she's going to think he doesn't have a manly personality, and, and vice versa. He's going to think she's overbearing and dominant, unless they learn how to respect each other's style. So this is what we learn in love types, how to do that. Uh, do you guys ever run across that issue in the beginning of your marriage? This is, yeah, this is uh, it's a great perspective. We didn't have a huge issue, but uh, I think that that's a testament to the fact that I think Based on these personality types, we, we fit as you've described, but we're not super strong in either spectrum. Ah, okay. Like we could, uh, uh, I'm psychoanalyzing ourselves right now, but we can kind of <laughs> we can kind of flow in between the introvert and extrovert. Like Sarah, I would agree is more extroverted, but just the same, she can enjoy staying at home and and she's not strong and right. overtly extroverted but uh yeah and yeah. also as you get older a little bit i don't know if you guys are in your 30s or what, what's your age range but typically mm -hmm. as you come to the middle years you uh, sometimes develop the other side so maybe extroverts can become a little more introvert as they get older especially if you have kids and you know you have more of a family lifestyle uh although you know sometimes people throughout their life they maintain their preference whether it's introversion or extroversion so it is always important to know you know what is your partner's style what is your style and then learn how to respect each other and appreciate each other's differences. And that's the big thing about love types. Uh, if you're married and, you know, you have love in the relationship and there's a lot of great things, but maybe you're different in one area. That's what you want to really learn how to understand in your partner. For example, the extrovert will say, hey, introvert, uh, you know, you can relax at home. Maybe I'll go out with some friends. I'll come back. I'll have my, you know, girls or boys night out. And the introvert can say, okay, and I appreciate you leaving me with some quiet time. Now, I don't know if you guys ever did that part of it uh, in your relationship. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely, when I lived back in Florida where most of my girlfriends lived, I made it a priority to continue those friendships and go out and socialize. Um, and sometimes Chase would just stay home and chill. So it go. worked out. Per yeah. Perfect. Now, sometimes, I mean, the introvert can be maybe a little jealous or possessive. They say, why do you want to go with all those people? Who do you love more, them or me? Uh, unless they're you know more mature and understand that scenario. So Chase, what happened to you? Were you able to uh, accept her going out with her friends? Yeah, yeah, it was fine, and uh, and I, I think you mentioned it, but the key here is the respect is, yes. is that a couple like like we were able to do is I respect. Yeah, you want to go out, it's fine, and mm -hmm. and that it's okay to have these differences because I think sometimes people will think they want to be with someone that where you're just exactly alike, and certainly there's important things to to match up on, but. Uh, it's actually nice to to have some differences in personalities. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, the complementary style where, you know, the extrovert likes the introvert to calm them down, you know, to say, hey, let's relax a little bit. The introvert likes the extrovert to socialize them, get them out of the house. Or you could have the person that's very spontaneous with the person that's very structured. And the structured person can, you know, make sure the bills are paid on time, you know, make sure your car doesn't get repossessed. Uh, and the spontaneous person can say, hey, let's go out to Vegas. Let's go out to have fun and enjoy life a little bit. So they can kind of really balance each other if they respect each other, right? If they appreciate the style. Because if they don't, the structured person will say to the spontaneous person, you're so sloppy and you're, you're uh, disorganized. And the other person will say, you're such a stick in the mud. Why don't you relax and enjoy life? So again, it, has to, it goes back to that appreciation for the, you know, the different styles. How do you go about having that conversation? Like maybe they keep butting heads about the extrovert and the introvert not agreeing on their social life. How do you address that so it goes smoothly in the relationship? Well, it's always good to start out with what we call uh, softeners or positive statements. Uh, there's a uh, psychologist named Osada that talked about the level of positive to negative statements that we have in relationships and also in work. They should be around five to one or three, three, to f three or four or five to one. For example, you say to your partner, honey, you know, you are, you're a great lover. You're a wonderful spouse. Uh, you're great around the house, but you know, you're a little bit messy sometimes. So, you know, you start with three good ones and one bad one. But if you say to them, you know, you're a lousy lover, terrible provider, 
terrible father, but you make nice enchiladas. You know, so, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to work. And sometimes people do that. They start off with the negative first and they pile on a bunch of negatives and they say, you're messy, you're sloppy, you're disorganized. Instead of saying, well, you know, there's great things about you, but sometimes your disorganization does bother me because I'm more structured and vice versa. The, the spontaneous person says, you know, I love a lot of things about you and you're a wonderful spouse and, and all, all that. But sometimes you maybe come across as a little bit too inflexible in certain things. And, uh, you know, my, from my perspective. So, again, it is, you know, maintaining respect, you know, praising your partner and then segueing into the one area that you do have a difference and where you see where you can work it out. Maybe, you know, compromising sometimes. So once in a while, we'll go out and have your social night out for the extrovert and sometimes we'll stay in for the introvert. So being able to agree, in a sense, to negotiate with each other is an important thing. The softeners are such a valuable communication tool. It's yes. so simple, but... But we can, especially in a long-term relationship, you take your partner for granted and suddenly you don't even realize that your, your statements might not even be like overtly negative, but they're, they're not positive, you know, and, and that just it, not even if you're trying to get something you want, but just for a healthy communication that you're keeping that balance of, let's say, five positive statements yes. to a negative one is a a great Def tool. Definitely. The other thing is, uh, the other dimension we haven't talked about a lot is the thinker versus the feeler. And uh, typically, if half of people are thinkers, half are feelers, but there is a gender difference. Two-thirds of males are what we call the thinking type, you know, more logical, analytical. Two-thirds of females are more the feeling type, the emotional style. And you could have actually a combination with either one. I mean, you could have a male thinker with a female feeler or even a male feeler with a female thinker, and it could work out. But again, you have to understand that person's language because thinkers and feelers do speak a different language. You guys remember the old book, uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus by John Gray? Yeah. And uh, he endorsed my book, Love Types, and he talks about that difference uh, in terms of men and women. But really, what I say, like to say is thinkers are from Mars and, and feelers are from Venus. In other words, it's not just about gender, it's about that communication style. And the feeler, for example, male or female, they like, they like more romance and touchy-feely words and that kind of feeling of appreciation in an emotional way. The thinker likes uh, intellectual compatibility Competence, feeling they're made, uh, they have intellectual communication. Even a little bit of sarcasm and witty repartee is what thinker, thinkers enjoy. So I'm wondering about you guys. Are you guys more thinkers? Do you guys like that kind of witty repartee, a little bit of debate at times, things like that? I'd say I'm definitely a thinker. <laughs> I'm more of a feeler, but ah. I'm not very sensitive. But I do oh. like the romance and the, ah, okay. I don't know, so I don't. Okay. Uh, could, could you be a closet feeler or something? You're hidden a feeler or something like that? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I noticed your, war your voice is very warm and kind of a feeling voice. But then I asked you if you're a feeler and you said, no, I'm a thinker. Yeah. And uh, do you like not cry much at movies and you don't like touchy-feely kind of stuff? No, not really. Okay. H how are you a feeler then? You, you say you are emotional in some ways. Well, you said that uh, you know they like you like to be romanced and um, so I think I'm I'm a feeler when it comes to the way Chase treats me. Like I like to uh, be feel romantic and in okay. that yeah. sense, but right. but then I I don't I don't get uh, I don't cry easily or you know things that I'm on movies and stuff like that. Okay, so you're probably what we call borderline on that on that personality dimension. So you're kind of somewhere in the, a little bit in the middle, maybe leading toward one end or the other. But you can see how that can be an issue, you know, for the feeler, they need to hit, get that emotional appreciation a lot. You know, I love you and honey and, you know, physical affection. And, and the thinker doesn't need it as much. You know, as long as they know I'm with this partner and they care about, they love me, I'm fine. You know, and we can have great conversations and intellectual compatibility. Uh, that's what really appeals to me. And also that my partner is competent and intelligent. That's very important. Is that important to you, Sarah? It is, yeah, and I'm I'm lucky. I got a good one. Yeah, yeah you got a smart guy. <laughs> is that important to you, Chase? Uh, a woman that is also intelligent and and you know, knows what she's doing has a certain sense of competence. Yes, absolutely. This podcast wouldn't exist if uh, <laughs> have a competent partner on it. Yeah, that, exactly. So yeah, so you guys are well matched, and uh, so you know, you see the power of this this kind of uh, approach is that we are really understanding first of all, embracing who we really are. What is our true nature? Am I a thinker or a feeler, an introvert, extrovert? And then looking at the full combination of the types, you know, for example, in this case, um, you're a craftsperson or a, a wheeler dealer, and then learning how to respect and appreciate your partner and, and enhancing each other, assuming there are other, you know, obviously good parts of the relationship and you're, you're in love and there's compatibility in most areas. 
It kind of reminds me of understanding your partner's love language too, because you kind of have to, it's important to know how your partner uh, reacts to things, feels, because once you know that you can really talk to them in that language or talk to their personality that way. And it, it can really make you connect even on a deeper level. Uh, definitely so. Yeah. The thing about gifts or appreciation and things like that, physical touch and the, that's the idea to understand, you know, yourself. And sometimes people don't do that. For example, you know, I'm a male feeder myself. So male feeders often are under, misunderstood because they're non-traditional or a female thinker is sometimes misunderstood. People th see her as cold and, you know, maybe dominant in a certain way. Uh, but they don't realize that she can be very feminine in her own style. And a, a, female, a male feeler can be very masculine in his own energy. But again, it's non-traditional. And many times people deny who they are. And then they have issues later on to find the right person because they try to fit what the other person wants. And for example, Chase, you're a fairly rare type. You know, ISTP or in Myers-Briggs terminology or craftsperson is about maybe 5% of the population. So you're kind of a rare guy. Isn't that nice, Sarah? You picked a rare one? <laughs> <laughs> And among females, uh, your type is a little bit rare too, The what we call the wheeler-dealer style. That's kind of a marketing, promotional, you know, kind of like a make, th make things happen kind of person. And that's also a little bit rare in the females. So you guys are both uh, unique personalities. So you should congratulate yourself on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure our uh, listeners are listening and relating to one personality or another. Is there somewhere online that they can look at these questions, take the test to really dial uh, in. Yes, they can go to lovetype.com, L-O-V-E-T-Y-P-E.com. And also my uh, podcast is loveuniversity.love. And I talk about, you know, every week relationships and other love uh, compatibility ideas. So definitely they can do that on either side and figure out, you know, who they are and then, you know, who, who their partner is. That's very important too. So both of, you, both of them can take the, the quiz. Yeah, it's a, it's a key thing. And I think it's something we take for granted of, not only understanding our partner's personality type, but our own and, and how valuable it can be in understanding our own, but then, and then how we relate to our partner and how we can, like Sarah said earlier, communicate with them to be most effective or how we can compromise. If you got a partner who's an extrovert and you're an introvert, it's not wrong and it doesn't mean it can't work. It just, and in fact, I think it's, it, I don't, I don't want to say better, but it can be a great thing because that's the beauty of a relationship is you balance each other out or maybe you get that introvert to, to go out more and now suddenly they go, oh, you know, I was missing out on some things that, that uh, in life and maybe they're not going to switch to being extroverted, but it's just a nice little balance. Yeah, it can be. Like, that's a complementary style where someone's strength is someone's weakness and someone's weakness is someone's strength. The only issue, though, is when you have too many differences, you can have a lot of conflict. For example, if you're total opposites, let's say, uh, Sarah, you're a, a wheeler dealer, but you're with a man who's uh, maybe a social, uh, you know, idealistic philosopher, someone who's in pie in the sky, emotional stuff. You know, the, you know, you guys may have a lot of issues with that because you are very different, you know, maybe total opposites. But if you're different in maybe one dimension, like you guys are a little bit different on introvert, extrovert, but everything else is similar, then, like you said, that can be a great combination because you can balance out that one side. So you also have to be careful. I mean, if you are single or, you know, even with someone that you're totally different, that can pose some, some challenges. And it's important to recognize. And, and I, I'm sure our listeners will get on get on the website, take the <laughs> personality yes. test and, and really right. be able to dial things in. And you've given us some great information today. Sarah and I learned a little bit yeah. about our own personality. <laughs> Well, yeah, now you know that uh, you have to take them out, uh, you know, to the nature outings and uh, maybe uh, Chase, you can party a little bit once in a while, right? Take her out to a comedy <laughs> club or something, right? <laughs> yeah, do it. And, and, and before we wrap up, are there any lasting thoughts you want to leave our listeners with as far as um, understanding their personality and the importance of it in the relationship? Yeah, basically, uh, you know, the term know, know thyself uh, and also embrace thyself, you know, really learn how to love uh, who you who you are, your personality, your uniqueness. You know, just like we have a unique DNA, we have a unique personality DNA. Whether you're the idealistic philosopher, the social philosopher, the wheeler dealer, the scientist, uh, the practical person, or the you know what we call the tr the traditionalist, uh, old fashioned person. And the thing is, all of them have value, and they realize that just because someone's different doesn't mean they're better or worse than you. You know, we all have value in our own way, and also realize that not everyone is like you. Many times we think that other people think like us, you know, the same values, the same ideas, and they may not, especially in a marriage. 
There may be some differences. But again, the key is to celebrate both the similarities and the differences. And what I like the term is, uh, Gottman talks about this in his book, is a create meaning in your relationship. I like to use the phrase to create light in the world. Uh, you know, as a couple, married couple, let's say, whether it's through your children, maybe what you guys are doing, which is great, starting a business together, a podcast to enlighten people. Uh, you know, it's more than just sex or, or companionship or, or you know, being together, but something beyond that. There's a purpose for your existence together as a couple, as a married couple. So I think that's the beautiful part. And I would encourage everyone to think about that. How do you create light in the world as a married couple? How do you create goodness and, and positivity and share it with others? Awesome. Well, I think that is a perfect note to leave us on and our and our listeners today. So again, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to have the links to Guy Types on our website as well as um, the University Your Love University podcast. Definitely. And listeners know to go there to huh. check out all those resources. Yes. And uh, we appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, it's been a great pleasure. And again, Love University. We do the weekly show on uh, you know loving yourself, others, and a higher nature. And uh, it's all about educating people to find the love within and also the love without. And uh, it's been a wonderful pleasure. Hope to see you guys in another time. So what do you think? Sarah and Chase, I think, did a good job of interviewing me. And I was able to help them a little bit with some uh, love type and compatibility knowledge. So this is what we want to do. We want to every week bring interesting guests. And if you have any guest suggestions, anyone that you know that does uh, work with uh, self-esteem, love, relationships, or anything else, we would love to have you tell us about it. So definitely write us at lovetype for you at AOL.com. That's L-O-V-E-T-Y-P-E, the number four, letter U at AOL.com. Call us at 310-226-8090. Also check out our website at loveuniversity.love. Well, everyone, until next time, put away your iPads, your uh, scanners, your computers, your phones, and your pads, and we will see you next time at Love University. Dr. Avila.